हेलो एवरीवन अस्सलाम वालेकुम गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते सत श्री अकाल फ्रॉम लाहौर वेलकम टू द फोर्थ सीजन ऑफ संडे स्टोरीज लाइव एज यू कैन काइंड ऑफ गेट अ सेंस फ्रॉम माय वॉइस आई एम रियली काइंड ऑफ एक्साइटेड टुडे मे बी मोर सो देन ऑन अदर ओकेजंस एंड आई विल टेल यू व्हाई very happy uh, to be here my name is uh, farooq khan and i will be uh, your mc for today's uh, event uh, it's my pleasure uh, uh, to welcome you to this episode where we will be uh, having a conversation with a, a prolific uh, and an iconic uh, scholar uh, of uh, not just partition but of uh, a number of other subjects uh, professor ganindra pande Uh, this event series takes place every sunday so uh, be sure to join us a uh, little bit about myself uh, as i mentioned uh, my name is farooq khan uh, i teach post colonial studies at lahore university of management sciences and my association uh, uh, with partition uh, is that uh, again it's 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 much more than just an academic uh, exercise Uh, my own uh, mother's uh, family moved from a small village near gurdaspur uh, uh, and there were uh, some members of my family uh, who i kind of maybe we'll talk about them at a later uh, uh, stage i've been involved uh, with uh, 1947 partition archive for a number of years and uh, it, what this archive what this uh, uh, group does Uh, uh, is that they have documented over 10000 uh, families uh, stories you can visit uh, uh, you can learn more about this by visiting the uh, archives website or speaking to any of the uh, team members uh, who are here uh, today it is my honor to continue the sunday stories live and facilitated what i believe will be a fascinating conversation with professor gurindra pande uh, let's welcome him send him a like or heart Uh, since you know we can't really hear your clapping at the moment so uh, and again one of the things that i'm going to uh, uh, do is that because of the sheer breadth of uh, information that i have about him that's how fantastic he has been but for the sake of this particular program i'm going to shorten uh, uh, the uh, official bio that i have So uh, Professor Gurinder Pande was trained at uh, University of Delhi uh, uh, India and University of Oxford where he was a Rhodes uh, scholar uh, and then he's held tenured positions at leading universities and research institutions in India UK and the US and uh, been a visiting professor in Japan Australia the Netherlands UK US uh, uh, before moving to Emory he taught at the Center for Studies Uh, uh in social sciences at kolkata uh, uh the university of delhi and at uh, the johns hopkins university baltimore as a founding member and leading theorist uh, from the subaltern studies project uh, professor pande has written extensively on colonial and post colonial south asia nationalism and minorities civil rights and democracy and Uh, much more i think pertinent to what we are going to be discussing today which is the history of history writing uh, he has a number uh, of books but i will just maybe mention uh, two or three which are uh, uh, related to the topic that we are covering uh, today uh, one is routine violence nations fragments histories uh, this came out in 2006 is one of the kind of seminal books uh, uh, on on this subject Uh, the other one is the construction of communalism in north india uh, and the third one uh, that i just like to mention here is remembering partition violence uh, uh, nationalism and uh, history in india so uh, professor pande is currently working on two books one a comparative study on the practice of democracy past and present and the second is a history of 20th century Uh, india as seen from the location of family and home uh, ongoing collaborative research and public intellectual projects include investigations of subaltern studies and their histories politics and democracy in our time and the future of america so uh, professor pande uh, uh, it is an honor 
and I'd like to welcome you. Thank you so much for taking uh, the time and being here. Thank you, Farooq. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, again, you know, as someone who's dealt uh, uh, with partition and partition uh, uh, related subjects, first thing is like, I mean, do you have a, a family connection with partition? When, when did you become aware of uh, partition growing up? Farooq Sahib, probably like you, um, you know, growing up in northern India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, one's aware of it from very early. Uh, I was born, of course, after partition and independence. And so these um, whispered uh, stories, but also allusions to places and people which were very much part of our world and a world that had somehow got split. My father's first posting as an emergency commission military officer was in the northwest of India. He was actually in Lundi Kotal in the Khyber Pass region. And he often talked about it and, you know, about the beauty of the place and so on. And Lundi Kotal was, you know, a place we would never dream of going to. And, you know, hard to imagine what it was, what the Khyber Pass was. So it, you grew up in that sort of context. Um, there's no personal story. My parents were both from Eastern Uttar Pradesh, uh, Central and Eastern Uttar Pradesh, um, East of Delhi. And, uh, but and you know very well, and I certainly grew up in that kind of atmosphere. Indo-Muslim culture is our culture. Our inheritance is a plural one where the existence of people who believed in and lived uh, with different kinds of beliefs, different kinds of religious denominations, different religious holidays, was not a matter of distress. It was a matter of celebration to the extent that you had so many more holidays, so many more feasts, so many things to participate in. Um, you know, we would all join the iftar if, if we were with you, as, as you know. So that's that's the way in which I grew up. Uh, I'll tell you more specifically about the um, the the focus on partition, how it arose. It was just part. Hamare mahol metha. This was part of our growing up, um, and a peculiarity which lived with me always from the time I must have been a schoolboy was this kind of ambivalent relationship with Muslims once partition had happened. For, for people in the Hindu and Sikh families who, who were in India. There was an ambivalent relationship because this was very much part of our heritage. Friendships were there across this religious divide. And yet the Muslims were now in an enemy nation, if you like. And so quite where they belonged in India remained, it seems to me, a point of some tension. Though as a child, I would not have been aware of that. Um, do you want me to go on? I'd, yeah, yeah I'd, uh, again, uh, again, because my uh, follow-up question is connected with this, that when the conventional history of partition and in which you talk about, I think, what became of uh, how certain maybe communities uh, uh, were looked at, and of course, I mean, the, it, it's the mirror image in Pakistan that, you know, how... Uh, uh, Hindus and Sikhs uh, might have been viewed. The way that history is normally written, again, be it about partition or independence, it is always focused so much individual focus that each person, each country, each community, it chooses its own people that it wants to focus on. And these are, by that people, I mean the singular uh, individual. So, unko hum politician, leader, whatever we want to call them. That's how kind of, or partition ko bhi almost usi tarah frame kiya jata hai. But jo aapne kaam kiya partition ka, that was kind of something completely usko change kar diya. That you brought it on jo individual level ke upar of people or, or ordinary people. And in a sense, jo Typically, the history of the history was not taught in this way. It was not conceptualized in this way. So, 
हाउ डिड दैट हैपन एंड ऑफ कोर्स जो आपने हिस्ट्री पढ़ी होगी एंड बाद में जो आपने हिस्ट्री लिखी दीज वुड बी टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स तो ये ट्रांजिशन किस तरह हुई फरूख साहब ये इतना गहन सवाल है इतना डीप है कि इसका जवाब देना मुश्किल है कुछ मिनटों में तो कहना बहुत मुश्किल है मगर मैं दो तीन चीज़ें कह देता हूँ कुछ माइट हेल्प and uh, i would just speak in english just so that if there is a wider audience yeah, yeah, yeah. That, hindi hindi is fine as well yeah uh, hindi is fine uh, aap aur hum to hindi urdu aaram se samajh rahe hain kuch aur log shayad na samjhe um one of the things is as i was leaving school and going into undergraduate college um there were world developments of a kind that affected youth all over the world the vietnam struggle against the americans the chinese revolution had taken place and the chinese cultural revolution was taking place the black struggle in the united states was already worldwide in a sense the women's struggle was fundamental so as a young college student uh, as a uh, high school leaver these were part of the world that we inhabited we grew up with we we grew up with things happening in india and the things happening in india were quite a fascinating in that on the one hand india had had quite a remarkable experiment in building a democracy and a development program in a very poor country on the other hand the promises of independence and de- development and democracy and secularism had not been realized as clearly or as efficiently as gloriously as of course young people wanted and so one of the things uh, that that emerged as, in the context of all those struggles across the world and within india in 19 in the late 1960s 1967 i think there was in bihar a famine after a very very long time uh, drought and 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 famine deaths and this really hit us that you know you could be living in a country that was modern that was sophisticated that and yet there were people who who had no food to eat and that the administration and the structures had no way of coping with this or had, had inadequate attention towards it all of this made history a different kind of question for us that that whole generation not just me for anyone who is sensitive and concerned and you know a concerned citizen of india pakistan bangladesh but uh, of the world it was a vital thing to think whose history is it that we write and tell and i hadn't enjoyed history when i was in school i gradually began to enjoy it in college but in the main because of all these political developments and the questions that were being asked and so instinctively if you like Uh, but to some extent self consciously as a political choice we said we want to write the history of india of the people of india of the vast majority and that's really where the the um, uh, question arose whose partition are we writing about what partition are we writing about what what uh, nationalism are we writing about In, from whose perspective and what are the effects on different and what are the um what should we say commitments of different sections of the population different groups within the population which makes up the tapestry called india or pakistan or bangladesh or sri lanka mm-hmm. so that's the larger broader frame and and isi ko then again maybe like i'll fo- bring it a little bit more uh, a focus on uh, partition in itself because one of the books that you have is called remembering partition So, उसके बारे में अगर आप बताएं कि जी रिमेम्बरिंग पार्टीशन ये जो आप बता रहे हैं वॉज गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम द इंडिविजुअल लेवल और हाउ डिड दैट काम अबाउट ओके एक्चुअली दैट दैट माय हेल्प मी आंसर योर क्वेश्चन मोर एडिक्वेटली एंड आई एम गोइंग टू डू इट इन टू पार्ट्स वन इज वाई द इश्यू ऑफ पार्टीशन अगेन बिकेम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अस let me just first uh, deal with that in 1984 uh, indira gandhi was assassinated bhandrawale was killed 
um, the anti-Sikh riots took place on a huge scale, absolutely huge scale. There were killings of, of Sikhs all over Delhi, Calcutta, big cities in many places. And there was real violence, unexpected, in middle class localities, let alone in the localities of the poor. All sorts of people were joining it. And all sorts of really astonishing reactions were coming. Polarized, angry, uh, extremist, anti-Sikh, as, as well as other. At that time, there was a great deal of writing in the press and amongst intellectuals, a great deal of conversation about how this was like partition all over again. And we'd all heard about the violence of partition and so on. To have it so immediate, to have it happening right then. And from 1984 on, the rise of a Hindu right wing and its militancy and its um, aggression its determination to destroy important symbols of our plural inheritance. The Babri Masjid was, was the main, the most important example of that. 1992, when that was destroyed. And then on from that, you know, we can see what the results have been until today. In any case, I had been concerned with these sorts of questions. As I told you, there was a kind of ambivalent relationship to the minorities, but particularly to the Muslims, which I had grown up with sensed. Um, as uh, a college student, I became very aware of the centrality of this thing. As a research student, then this became very important to me. But I was teaching in Delhi in, in the 1980s. And the number of journalists who would, who would come to me and ask the questions about partition and about the current conditions, what, what, what should we say? What is your sense? And there were interviews of many kinds. In any case, that was the immediate impetus for going back to an investigation and, and um, a focus on the history of partition. Uh, I had written my book on communalism by, by that time. So I was already well into that track. I was do, doing that kind of investigation. All my work was looking at the histories of people who were not centrally written about. Peasants, then Muslims, more recently Dalits, now, people in the home, uh, you know, which is not written as a central part of history. Anyway, so that was the reason for returning to the investigation of partition. And then you asked the question about the, why it was remembering partition. And that, that helps me, um, uh, I think, respond to your repeated questions. I called the book Remembering Partition for a very specific reason. I wanted to problematize both remembering and partition. Let, let's use partition first. We'd all got used to it and um, you know, and I know, and my Bangladeshi colleagues know, your, your, your colleagues know. We all speak of partition and know what we are talking about. But partition is a conceptualization of an event or a series of events or happening in history of a consequential moment in our histories. What if that event was not conceptualized as partition, but as civil war? What if it was conceptualized as genocide? What is, if it was conceptualized as violence? And my book fundamentally said this, that it is not that partition leads to violence, or that violence leads to something called partition. Partition is the violence. That what actually had consequence, what this event was, was a violent disruption of lives, communities, families, ways of being, ways of thinking, our pasts and our presents and our futures, right? So the conceptualization of an event itself is a history of that event. What if we did not call the French Revolution or the Russian Revolution a revolution and called it a coup d'etat, you know, which you can do, you know, in many instances. If you call it a coup d'etat, it's a totally different idea of what happened and you would write a very different history. And so I wanted to problematize the question of what partition was. I continue to use the term because it is the common sense term, but I put it under a question mark from the beginning of the book, the, the other term, remembering. 
was, there was in history, and there continues to be to a large extent, some notion of historians working with an archive that is definitive and ordinary people living with memories that are fallible. And I made the point in the book and wanted to make the point that both history and memory are fallible. Both are dependent on similar kinds of uh, grounds and both are changing all the time. And that this divide between memory and history was a very peculiar divide, an unexpected one, because in fact, what the archive has is a memory. It's the official memory very often, but you can also have party memories. You can have other things and so on. Um, and so remembering partition also was a more continuous process. It's not, we know what it was. We have a clear memory of it. It is that you remember it differently at different times, in different places, amongst different communities, and differently within the same community at different times, and in different sections of the same community, and so on. Okay, So to that extent, um, it was a problematizing which opened up the question of what partition was and what its history might be. This history, I said from the very beginning, is already divided into two, an official narration of what partition was, whether that's an Indian official or a Pakistani official or a British official or a Bangladeshi, and the people's memory of it. And the, you know, I haven't done the thousands of interviews that the partition archive uh, that, you, that this is part of has done. I didn't do 10,000 interviews, but I did hundreds. And in those hundreds of interviews, this is what came through repeatedly that what most people living through that time remembered was the rola, the disturbance, the upheaval. Rola Punjabi term hoti ji, ro, jo rola Why? So, exactly. That's why I said rola. Rola right? is this almost kind of biblical proportion ki jo cheez hai na, wo exactly. hai. Exactly. rola otherwise could be just noise, but no. wo partition no, ki no. context it's, mein it's ho jata hai ke on a much, much kind of it's, grander it's scale. Epic. Yeah. It's epic. In one of the first interviews I did, which I recorded, um, I, I tried not to record interviews in the main because I thought it disrupted. Me. One of the first that I recorded, when I went back and listened to the, to the recording, I noticed something I wouldn't have noticed otherwise. That when I was talking to the person, businessman who's, who had moved from Bahawalpur to Delhi, uh, who, the family had moved in, in 1946, 47, or 47, 48. Um, he, kept talking when I said, was that before partition or after partition? In the first few instances of, of his um, commentary, he, he kept talking about the migration. Migration se pehle, migration ke baad. For him, it was migration. And I did not hear that while we were talking. So I kept asking about partition. And after a little while, because he was sensitive, he stopped saying migration. He started saying partition because he knew I was more comfortable with it. Now that tells me two different histories. I, having grown up with the textbooks and you know, um, seeking to write something on this event, which is known as partition, was constantly trying to date what he was telling me about by saying, was that before partition? When is partition? And you know, you'd get different answers from the people who lived in Bihar for whom it happened in 1946, for the people who lived in Noakhali when it began in 1946, from the people in Amritsar and, and, and Lahore and much of the north, northwest Punjab, for whom March 1947 was quite often the beginning and in fact, the partition. So that immediately brings you to, to, a, to an investigation, not of what the leaders were doing, but of what, how it, people experienced this whole series of events, which we have conceptualized as partition, and what it meant in terms of changing the histories, the lives, the families, the communities, the memories, the sensibilities, the subjectivities of people who thought of themselves as Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, you know, uh, ex untouchable whatever it may be. That's, that's I don't know if that's too, that's too long an answer. No, 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 it's, it's, it's perfect. And uh, I just need to plug in our uh, uh, program, which is that, again, and this is to the audience, uh, you're watching Sunday Stories live uh, from the 1947 partition archive. Uh, today, we are very fortunate to have Professor 
Manindra Pandey uh, as our guest. Uh, my name is Farooq Khan. Uh, we still have about uh, five to six minutes where uh, I will be in conversation uh, with Professor Pandey, but then what we would want is to hear from your side uh, and we will be uh, ready to take some uh, questions uh, from the audience. So please uh, do type your questions into the comment boxes and we'll choose some of them uh, uh, to ask our uh, esteemed uh, uh, guest. So, uh, sir, us, us, us ko, uh, remembering ke upar hi, ag, isko aage le jai, and what you had said about you growing up and you know wanting to kind of maybe understand history in a different way than it was uh, uh, maybe taught at that particular time how do you see that when you yourself started teaching is history does it history uh, or history of partition does it kind of continue to be as important as it might have been for the second generation uh, uh, like yourself or do you think it's receded in the, to the background? Yeah, it's more important. Farooq sahab, you ask whatever questions, it's so deep that it's difficult to answer. I'll just tell the audience this, I'm taking my mind because their work, I'm using my own things, so I'm very nervous about it. So I, I dare not kind of say that my work is not my question, but this is not my question. But this is difficult to answer, but this is not my question. So please continue, sir. Yeah, not difficult so much as um, fundamental that it opens up so many things. It's difficult to respond to in a short time. That's all. That's all I mean. Um, important, very important to us. So I'm not quite sure at what level to pitch it. You see, at the broadest level, younger people all over the world are less interested in history today than the, than the world was earlier. Now there's a lot of kind of instant history, social media commentary, we, but people are not reading books. People are not thinking particular events to to say it's very immediate. Abhi Ukraine me kya ho raha? Abhi Pakistan me kya ho raha? Abhi Hindustan me kya ho raha? The last ten days or the last few months are history, and much of this. Now that's an important part of what's happened. Whatever the reason is, the pace of thinking, the reflectiveness has reduced, has gone down. Um, so I'm going to step back into a slightly more reflective uh, domain. There are people who are reflective. There are people who read books. There are students who are very concerned. And amongst many of them, the most uh, sensitive and the most um, conscientious amongst those students and teachers, because teachers to this applies, not all are reflective in the same way. Um, amongst the most sensitive and conscientious of them, I think history had changed by the time of the late 70s, 80s, and on from that. The women's movement, uh, oppositional struggles, black struggles, Dalit struggles in India, you know, all kinds of minority struggles all over the world produced alternative histories, histories that gave people a sense that the history we have been told is an official version. And what we need to know is something more that engages with whose history is this, who is telling it, for whom. And I think this had become part of a common sense amongst this sensitive community of students, of intellectuals, of media, people, of journalists, and so on and so forth, and of teachers who were willing to take that move. Because for many people, history remains what's in the archive. History remains definitive, uh, authoritative. But very large, and probably the most important uh, section of the community had moved to this other sense of um, thinking history. What is history? Who is telling it? When is it being told? How has it changed? The question you've just asked. How have notions of partition change between the time I was growing up, when I was a child, when I was a student and so on, and now. And here's the short answer. There is no way of saying this is what it is today, that is, that is what it was then. Because the point we've made is it's many different things at almost at any, any time. There are many contending views. 
And what has happened is the official views in many parts of the world have become more extremist. You can see this in the uh, Hindu right-wing regime in India much more um, forcefully because it's happened recently uh, than in other places. But there's an extremist official view against which you have to contend. There are lots of oppositional statements with that, but they're not always listened to so much. So what at the level of classrooms and what at the level of, uh, again, sensitive students and teachers, how different is it? And you know this from Pakistan. I, I know this from my Bangladeshi colleagues. I, I know it from my one visit to Pakistan, where there's an extraordinary sense of welcoming back someone who belonged, whom history had accidentally or for whatever reason made a distant stranger, neighbor, enemy in some ways. But the welcome I had, the welcome my wife and I had, had in Pakistan was extraordinary. Aap hamare mehman hai. We would never have charged you. Vagera, vagera. you know, that's part of what we've grown up with, part of what we live with. And that's a part of the sensibility of the students and the teachers who, who um, um, recognize that histories are told in very different ways. And histories are to an extent open that can go in different directions that are not inevitable. It is not inevitable that you had India and Pakistan and then Pakistan and Bangladesh. It's not inevitable. You could have had 22 nations in, in the Indian subcontinent because it's huge and it's very varied. But you could have gone many, many different ways. And we have gone many different ways, even after official partition. So that's one aspect of it, that there are many different. But here's, here's another, and this is important. For a lot of that second generation, the younger generation, partition is just old. They know nothing about it. And you are, it's, it's kind of distant. It's an object. It's like the Indus Valley civilization <laughs> or the Mughal Empire. You know something about it. You've heard about it. Symbolically, it may matter, but it's not an immediate thing. And that's a remarkable change. And the last thing I'll say in that respect is it depends on where you are discussing partition. If I'm, if I'm teaching it in the United States, obviously, it's a totally different world. The first question then has to be, the partition of what? Because there was the partition of Cyprus and the partition of uh, Ireland and the partition of Palestine and the partition of Korea that might come to mind and the partition of Germany. Uh, and so people will say, when you, why, are you, why are you just saying partition? We don't know what you're talking about. So you start with the difference. Anyway, again, too long in answer, but there you are. No, 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 it's perfect. So again, to our audience, uh, Okay, so I was going to ask a question, but uh, can, uh, okay, we have uh, Tarun Saint. Uh, hi, Tarun, how are you? Um, glad to have you here. So here is a, a, a question. Uh, kindly comment on the ethical conundrums posed uh, by the use of video and digital media in recording testimony of survivors. Is there a phantasmal uh, interference that results from the mediation of digital media and cyberspace. I think that Gunita Singh is more than that. But uh, because my question, which I had to ask you, maybe it will come in this, which was that you had mentioned uh, about your uh, field work. So, uska, and you had said that you didn't like recording. Whereas, which I started in 1997, when I started uh, uh, recording interviews, so I tried to use using video uh, uh, recordings because usme mujhe ye ho jata tha ke jo aap record kar rahe hain audio mein there are so many things that you miss out jo body language ka hai haath wo kis tarah kar rahe hain chehre pe kya expressions aate hain so field work ka, how, how is that uh, in terms of partition and because uh, the reason ye wali cheez i think important ho rahi hai because Partition at the end of the day is about trauma and trauma mein there are so many different signals that one gives and it's not just in words. So there are field work which uh, and maybe if you can address the question that Tarun has raised here as well. Tarun, um, it's nice to see your question. Um, I, I remember you from Delhi. Um, and uh, you make it uh, again 
larger, but, but there we are. Um, look, the ethical conundrum is was the central thing when it came to interviewing people. Um, do you make them relive this traumatic moment? Do you make them relive these terrible, terrible memories and the pain of it all? And what I found was an interesting thing. I Very often in, in the course of interviews, I would say to an elderly person or to whoever it was who was speaking and who um, broke down and wept and wept, I would say, Dekhi, rehne dijiye, iske zarurat nahi hai. Um, main sirf milne aaya tha, baatcheet karne aaya tha, sunna chahta tha. Magar aapko taklif ho rahi hai to, ye hum logo ko karne ki koi zarurat nahi hai. And it's very interesting how many times, I think in the vast majority of cases, they would say, nahi, ek minute, um, shant hone dijiye, ruk jane dijiye, susta lene dijiye. मगर मैं ये कहानी आपको सुनाना चाहता हूँ, मैं बताना चाहता हूँ। In other words, there was a need to unburden, there was a need to speak about these things, hopefully with somebody sympathetic. Now I'm not sure that they always saw that, saw that in me because I came as they they thought of Professor Zawa, and quite often they would also say, um, you know, um, I've asked them a question, and they would say, Professor Zawa. And another difficulty in that, as a man, I didn't have the same access to women. I, they, I mean, aunts and mothers, or you know, um, the, these the elders were always there. They were willing to be there. But the problem that arose so often in many of these instances is that the women would repeatedly say, "Ki." आपने तो इनको सुन ही लिया है मियां जी को या आ, बाप दादा को या आ, खाला को किसी को भी आ, खाला को नहीं आदमियों को और आ, आपने इनको सुन ही लिया है अब मैं क्या आपको बताऊं और फिर अगर बात होती इफ वी वर एबल टू कंटिन्यू द कन्वर्सेशन व्हिच यू डिड हैपन बिकॉज़ आई वुड से नहीं आई लाइक टू हियर what you what you are doing then they often nuanced in very very different ways so that i was able in the end in in my book to write about three partitions not just the partition that the muslim league wanted which is the lahore resolution not just the partition that the hindu and uh, sikh leaders decided on when partition was announced okay then we will split punjab and bengal as well the nationalities would be broken up but a third third partition which was captured in this woman's uh, st uh, statement to me in Allahabad, uh, way to the east of Delhi. I said, Parivar, bahut sare log chale gai, Pakistan. So I said, I never thought that we have to go, we All he, she said to me was, Beta, I can't go to the That's all she said. And for me, that was the third partition. Neem ke peed ko chhod ke jana. Bohat hi mushkil chiz thi. Aur kitno ke liye, is kabristan ko chhod ke, humare purva sab yahaan pe hain, humko ye kabristan nahi rahega humara. To hum kahaan jayenge? Humara vatan kahaan? So the ethical conundrum primarily was, how much can you tell? Can you name the killers? You know, if if it came out, because it came out in some of the things. Though almost always the stories were, yahan pe kuch nahi hua. Udhar hua tha, bahar hua tha. Shair ke bahar hua tha. Outside, outside your immediacy. And again, I make that, yeah. and again, I make that point in the book. I say, you know, it's always outside. The community itself is supposed to be, though it was not true. It would come through so often that within the village, within the section of the village, that people were saying nothing happened. Things happened, rape happened, abduction happened, killings happened, all sorts of things. How much can you reveal? And these are always, now to Tarun's question uh, as well as yours, um, these are always very difficult um, uh, issues where one has to exercise the judgment, be, be as considerate and 
as honest as possible. I was always as honest as I could be in those interviews. Uh, as I have been in the, the Dalit ones, where, where the Dalits would very often say, after listening to me for a little while, they would say, but we're not sure whose side you're on. And I would honestly say, look, I'm a researcher, I'm a teacher, I will write something. You will see from my writing whose side I am on, but otherwise I'm not on a side. I'm, you know, I'm doing this kind of work, which is different from your work. The short answer on the ethical question, with that honesty and with that, I do feel people wanted their stories told. Okay. And here's the other part of Tharun's question, which is the phantasmal interference. I'm not sure about phantasmal. سیکنڈ اوکے ٹیکنیکلٹیز آج کل ہوتی ہیں سو یہ ہو گیا کہ صرف انڈیا پاکستان میں نہیں ہو رہی ہوتی ہے امریکہ میں بھی ہوتی ہیں سو اٹس اوکے ان دا مین ٹائم واٹ آئی ووڈ سجیسٹ از دیٹ ایف یو ہیو کوشچن اور کامنٹس پلیز آپ ان کو جسٹ جسٹ یو نو پٹ دیم ان دا کامنٹ باکس اینڈ وی ول ڈیفینیٹلی اوکے Sorry, that might just have been a weak connection here, wherever it was. Yeah, yeah, but, anyway. but, but it's fine, it's fine. You, you're back. So, so uh, the last part was a little bit. If you could just start from I'll there. just repeat that so, uh, yeah. to Tarun's question. The, the thing is, I, I, I have no, no doubt that the mediation of technology, broadly speaking, the digital media and CS hyperspace are only the latest versions of it, affects the interaction affects the memory, affects the way in which things are told. I think as uh, Farooq was saying, uh, we don't always have a choice. If people want an archive, they're going to have to um, you know, build it in terms of the available technology, available resources. I just wish that we, were, we remained aware of the interference and what that interference means. And what, once again, it does to the histories and memories of those times, because it actually produces very, very different results. Um, Farooq um, Sahib, you were saying that the um, body language is necessary. Trauma, traumatic moments were in to record them. There was no words, no words, no words. There was a body language. Bhi hai. I've always had the feeling there's even more. There's their feelings, which in a one-to-one -one personal interaction, you get a sense of. There's quiet, there's disdain, there's uh, disapproval. Not all of that is captured. You know, in Zoom meetings, there's this problem. If you meet in classroom, you meet with students, there are a lot of things that come to understand. You can see when they are saying, why are they saying this? 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 But anyway, that's, that's the um, general uh, thought I have. Um, I don't think we escape technology. We'll have to work with it the best way we can and continue to the extent possible to have the person-to-person -person interaction and the direct yeah. relation of memories and histories. Uh, I mean, this question comes, I don't know, I mean, like again, very fascinated by Anayatullah Khan Mashraqi's character. Can you throw light on him? I don't know. I was just saying that maybe like your history is not on certain individuals. I don't know whether... Can you please have the question up again? Anayatullah Khan Mashraqi, does his name ring a bell? Not to me. It probably should to you. No, no. 
मैं तो लिटरेचर का बंदा हूँ मुझे बिल्कुल नहीं पता है सो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन बाय आहूजा तेजी सॉरी आई थिंक आपका जो uh, है क्वेश्चन इज 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 टू स्पेसिफिक मुझे तो डेफिनेटली uh, uh, मशरक का मैं भी नाम सुना हुआ होगा व्हेन इट कम्स टू रिलीजन इवन वेरी एजुकेटेड और वलनरेबल टू एक्सप्लोइटेशन दैट्स व्हाट पार्टिशन टॉट मी आई मीन एब्सोल्युटली एंड आई थिंक सर ये आप अगर एड्रेस कर दे बिकॉज आई थिंक यू काइंड ऑफ स्पोक अबाउट दिस व्हेन यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट 1984 व्हेन इट कम्स टू रिलीजन इवन वेरी एजुकेटेड और वलनरेबल टू एक्सप्लोइटेशन दैट्स व्हाट आई मीन एक्चुअली मुझे ये वो बड़ा स्टूडेंट्स के साथ भी ये काफ़ी मसला होता है दैट सम हाउ वी थिंक दैट अगर आप फॉर्मली एजुकेटेड हो तो यू आर सम हाउ बेटर आई मीन दैट्स नेवर दैट्स नेवर रियली काइंड ऑफ बोर्न आउट ऑन द ऑन द ग्राउंड और वो फील्ड वर्क में भी ये हुआ कि जो जो पढ़े लिखे होते हैं दे एक्चुअली वर मे बी एबल टू कवर द फीलिंग्स लिटिल बिट मोर देन जिन लोगों के साथ आपका ज्यादा इनफॉर्मल इंटरेक्शन हो जाता था सो जस्ट टू से और जस्ट टू हैव दिस फीलिंग दैट इफ यू आर एजुकेटेड यू वुडेंट बी वर्नरेबल टू एक्सप्लाइटेशन आई डोंट नो आई मीन लाइक इज दैट दैट जस्ट समथिंग आई थिंक दैट व्हिच वी वुड लाइक टू बिलीव इन नॉट रियली श्योर इफ इट इज ट्रू आप आप क्या कहोगे um ahuja i'm sorry that i wasn't able to respond to your question on uh, inayatullah mashriqi but uh, i can certainly respond to this and i think the point is a very valid one very very important um i think as farooq is saying you see this notion somehow that formal education particularly formal western education somehow makes us you know uh, more tolerant more liberal more understanding more more sensible uh is is just so uh fantastic i mean we we really should begin by thinking how how come all it does is train you to for a market now what yeah. it does is make you ambitious in particular ways akbar ilabadi ne bahut acha kiya hum kaha tha na ki hum kya kahe ab aap kya karnumaya kar gaye ba hue naukar hue pension mili phir mar gaye you know in a sense that's what formal education was it was not nothing more than the the drive to find your job and so on and so forth and actually reduce a sense of community and belonging and living with people of very different kinds and people who are vulnerable more than you are so to me uh, you know again one other demonstration of this the most committed and astonishing supporters of the right wing hindu regime in india today are the most educated and the most well off and you say what is this got to do with and they are quite willing to distort the religion they distort their own faith distort their beliefs their liberal beliefs they used to have some in the uh, interests of this new vision of not just a hindu india more importantly for them a great india a nuclear power the new one of the world powers this is such an a blighted a distorted a, a empty vision but it has nothing to do with ordinary people and it has nothing to do with religion it is it is the exploitation or the um, use of religion for very particular very very empty uh, and immediate and narrow political cultural social ambitions um oh, and oh. farooq sahab just the last last little yeah. thing yeah. Uh, on the last uh, on, on the other point that you made about ordinary people i would i would stress this i think the tolerance and the understanding of ordinary people they can also become very bigoted there's no question of that they can also be drawn into these extremist and angry and narrow uh, anti minority and anti this and anti other others uh, actions but in ayodhya i was very struck by this i visited ayodhya several times before the the masjid was destroyed because there was all this um, uh, the campaign that was building up the one person who really captured the divide between the extremists and the ordinary people was a sweeper woman 
whom we stopped just, there was a delegation of civil rights advocates um, that I, I was part of. And we were interviewing who we could, the Hindus there, the Muslims there, the uh, civil servants, the police people. And we stopped this woman and said, and she said, Why are you asking me this question? You would not, literally, I've never forgotten this. She said, You would not even go to the area where I live. Because she's a sweeper woman living in the very poor part of town. And she said, Mandir ho, masjid ho, kya fark padta hai? And that is a critical part of our understanding. These people are not so easily sold to visions of the great India, of the great religion, of the great culture and the great history we've inherited. We are all inheritors of complex, rich histories, which are great in many ways, but which are also, you know, um, marked, pockmarked, difficult, contradictory in many, many ways. And we've got to reckon with that and work towards building better conditions, better understanding and more vulnerability for ourselves as well as yeah, recognize the vulnerability. Um, again, I'm sorry, I took a bit long. There, there, there's, uh, again, what you were talking about maybe connected hai. Uh, Nishita uh, Sorek a question with 14th August now to be observed as Partition Horrors Remembrance Day. How will it affect the way we remember partition? So this is again, uh, maybe the younger uh, generation kind of being introduced to 1947 in a different way. Uh, I don't know how one would answer this question. Do you want me to respond to that? For yeah, 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 yes. yes I thought yeah. you were going to. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not smart, hota, so I would have been on the other side. I just so I'll push Nishita, it. Um, um, thank you for the question. Look, I mean, now in India, God's Day is being celebrated. Uh, uh, I think it was a uh, issue. Uh, we apologize. Uh, I think internet ka, uh, issue is right. it, it, It's okay. Mm-hmm. So, Ji, sir, can, can you at least can you hear us? Uh, we can't really hear you, and your uh, frame is frozen. Uh, maybe it might not be a bad idea. Maybe if you can connect it again. I, I wasn't sure if you could hear me, so I stopped for a second. Yeah, now you're fine. I'll, I'll be up. Okay, so I was just saying to Nishita that things are being celebrated or marked in ways that we would have that were unimaginable. Even 20, 30 years ago, the hopes and aspirations of the world were very different from what they are today. They were still that of building a better society a society in which everyone belonged, a society in which we would not leave the poor and the downtrodden and the minorities behind because we could not care less. We moved everywhere in the world. This is not just India or Pakistan. Uh, It's true of the United States. It's obviously true of Russia. It's true of China. Profit is driving everybody. And whatever works profit and a certain political power which enables profit to be to to be perpetuated and increased the political power does nothing but now support the super rich all over the world and so they use any symbols that work to build up this no, this uh, this great market for an international rich community investors and so on and for their own enrichment I do not know what effect this will have. I do not know how people will remember partition. All I can say is there are lots of people who think of society in a very different way, who are not concerned only about profit, who are not concerned only about winning the next election or, or uh, rigged election, who are concerned very much more about 
building community, building sensibility, building of a kind that we have lost, and the aspiration for which we have lost. I just hope that the younger people, yourself included, uh, and, and you clearly um, are on that side, will fight to preserve that, not just humanity, but that vision of the world, that vision of a good society, of struggles that are needed to maintain these visions and maintain, uh, perhaps build better societies. Uh, our big boss, Gunita uh, Singh Balla, asks a question. And for those who don't know, she is the brains and the heart and all the hard work behind this uh, program and uh, this whole initiative. Uh, Gunita asks, as individuals documenting oral history today of, uh, of partition witnesses, what would be your advice to us? Or I will just connect it to the uh, probably like one of the last questions I would have is, jo, uh, ye partition archive uh, ka jo kaam, uh, ho raha hota hai. I don't know, have you had a chance to maybe see some of the interviews which have been conducted? And uh, maybe how, and, and then connects to Gunita Singh's uh, 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 question, which is that how differently is the field work being done today than when you were doing it on, on, on your own? Um, Gunita ji, uh, Farooq Saab is absolutely right in saying you're a big boss because anyone who has produced this archive and done 10,000 um, interviews or, or more um, in, can't ask me the question, how should I do this? <laughs> you, you, will, you will know an answer much better than I do. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll suggest a couple of little things and they're not... Um, they're not necessarily um, easy things to, to, to um, accomplish or move towards. But I, I suggest one from my own experience of fieldwork, and I suggest one from the richness of the archive that you already have. From my own experience of fieldwork, and this you may or may not be able to accomplish, I found when I went into villages and small towns or mohallas in towns, where there were people who had been affected by partition and who as a collective had memories of it, had stories of it, had remembrance days of their own, you know, martyrs day for them at particular times, occasions that they marked, that there was a collective story and that interviewing one or two people quite often led to a collection, a gathering of lots of people. And I remember in, in um, uh, Indian Punjab, in West Punjab, uh, and uh, an IS officer from, from that village taking me to his village and being astonished at what had happened by the end of the day, which was perhaps 40 or 50 people staying for an hour or two, talking nonstop. And I was trying to record, record this. And he said to me at the end of the day, I don't know how you're going to make any sense of that. And then when I wrote that piece up and sent it to him, I published an, an article on that. He said, Gyan sahab, mujhe nahi aapne kaise kiya, magar aapne to kuch iska saar nikal liya hai. You really got, you got the sense of it. I just want to say that I think something else comes out of that collective presence of many different people. I've done this with Dalit students. I've done, done this with Dalit teachers as well, meeting them as a collective. Many different questions are thrown at you, sometimes questions that oppose one another as well. Different stories are told. In the West Punjab village where I went to, the local Muslims and the others spoke differently about the violence that had happened. And it came through in spite of them trying to paper it over, in spite of them covering it up. So there were sensibilities, there were memories, there was bitterness, there was anger that, that, you know, people had tried to overcome, but that was still evident, that affected their work, affected their being. Um, someone who had become Singh, though he was originally Khan, uh, some others said, so are you Singh or are you Khan? And, you know, that's a very hurtful question. It was said in public. 
and he said to me and he said to them effectively keh dijiye jo aap chahe singh kahiye khan kahiye he was a minority he was a you know, marginal place so it's possible that your partition archive could also do i mean if it's possible build these collective stories where it's more chaotic than the conversation that uh, farooq sahab and i are perhaps having uh, though this is chaotic enough but uh, in any case the the other thought that because you mean this may be um, again this is a question of funding i suppose more than anything else but but there's my thought i think to have the archive there is a start to build conversations on it so you know at the moment the conversations are to build the archive i suggest that we might build conversations from the archive by taking it to classrooms by taking it to other public forums perhaps you, perhaps you're doing this to, to some extent already but i found when when i was in india and i taught in india for a long time before i moved to the states wherever i went to give a talk uh, on my academic work on my book on communalism for example i would go and give a talk in bhopal or in allahabad or in um, uh, jaipur and students very often very left wing students ngos which were activists people would come to those talks and would say sir agar aapke paas waqt ho to sham ko aap humse mile kyunki baat bilkul alag hogi and i almost always try to meet them on an occasion deeply humbled by what they said they said aapke kitab angrezi mein hai humne page by page uska anuvad kiya hai tarjuma kiya hai aur padha hai humko lagta hai isme kuch hai aur hum aapse baat karna acha we have another uh, आपका इंटरनेट रिस्टोर हो गए कैन यू प्लीज शेयर द क्वेश्चन अगेन Uh, okay, I know. Uh, sir, ये लास्ट क्वेश्चन है आई थिंक मे बी आई माइट हैव कट यू ऑफ जब आप अभी वो क्वेश्चन आंसर पहला वाला कर रहे थे बट वो आपकी पिक्चर जो थी दैट हैड फ्रोजन सो आर यू एबल टू हेयर मी नाउ जस्ट आस दिस क्लास या सुदीप्ता कुमार पॉल का क्वेश्चन है वॉज रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ होम ऑन दिस साइड ऑफ द बॉर्डर थ्रू रिचुअल्स फूड एंड डायलैक्ट पॉसिबल how could one overcome the third kind of partition that you've talked about that's quite an interesting question yeah uh, i'll just repeat what i said to guneeth at the, at yeah. the end yeah. which is just the yeah. last part was simply that not only should our conversations lead to an archive i think the archive should lead to more conversations i think if you take it to other spaces different kinds of conversations different kinds of sensibilities might arise that was my thought uh shudipto i am assuming when you were saying on this side of the border you were talking about india um and um, so i'll take it from there um this is a difficult question look homes are reconstituted they must be we live we have to uh, reconstitute them in all sorts of ways rituals food and dialect uh, one ways uh, one way of it memories and histories are another part of it you know people constitute their subjectivity very differently quite often as as i said before people have become and i've seen this i've seen it among sikhs in bihar i've seen it among hindus all over the place i've seen it seen it among muslims uh, in britain as well as in uh, oxford um when i first spoke about partition and uh, i got interesting responses which which speak about sensibilities that you hadn't um quite r- registered as being powerfully pre- present so i would say yes homes are reconstructed and your the second part of your question is is the one that i think we might want to think about more how can one overcome the third partition that partition of you know having to leave what is so fundamental to us and i think that's an important thought 
Uh, and I think here's what I would say. I would say that perhaps the best way of overcoming that is to recognize how many other people had to do exactly the same. They lost fundamental parts of their being. In what has happened to the Punjab and to Bengal is the division of two nationalities, two linguistic communities, two cultures, which continue to exist in sort of different forms now on the two sides of the border. And that's a severe loss. It's happened. But the vulnerabilities and the aggression and the fear and the bitterness that remains on both sides is something one must recognize as remaining on both sides, as happening on both sides. I have extended this in my work to say nationalism tends to do this everywhere. And unfortunately, the last 20 years or 30 years of chauvinist nationalism, the rise of this terrible right wing, uh, aggressive chauvinistic nationalism. We, America is great. Make America great again. Make India the great nation it has always been. Make China the greatest in the world. This nationalism leaves a lot to answer for and needs to be challenged in a quite fundamental way. It needs to be challenged as the opposite of the nationalism and the anti-colonialism that we grew up with, uh, which was a desire to make a different kind of more inclusive world, a world in which no one was left behind, in which the vulnerable were as deserving and all vulnerable people as deserving of rights as anybody else the poor, the downtrodden, the people with, without, the minorities. Uh, women were as deserving and perhaps even more deserving, more in need of support than those who already have it fairly good. And so that's probably the way of overcoming that third sense, the bitterness, the, the sorrow, the pain uh, of partition that perhaps your family experienced uh, and Farooq's family experienced. Uh, and my family never did directly, but, you know, did psychologically in so many ways. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, sir. I think like uh, we've uh, reached our uh, time limit. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out uh, for kind of, you know, just answering uh, not just my questions, but questions from the audience. And for both of us to overcoming uh, the obstacles that internet was trying to throw our way. So thank you so uh, very much. I'll just thank the audience and then uh, please just stay on screen. So again, thank you very much. Uh, this is to the audience for tuning in. If you appreciate our oral history work and our mission, please consider making a donation of any kind. Uh, we rely 100% on donations as an NGO in some countries. Donations are tax-free. Uh, links are in the description of this video. So uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. So this is Farooq Khan saying, Asalaamu uh, Alaikum, Namaste, Sat Sri Akal, uh, and good evening from Lahore. Uh, till I see you next week, please take care of yourself and of each other. Bye-bye. Thank you, Farooq. Look after yourself and be well. Sir, I think they'll just... Uh, uh, yeah.